What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with a new Nintendo 64 video game review for you. In this week's review, I'll be taking a look at StarCraft 64. Yes, that's correct, your viewer. The famous real-time strategy game for the PC and Mac, which was originally released on March 1998, is also on the Nintendo 64. This port was developed by Blizzard Entertainment and published by Nintendo, with a North American release date of June 16th, 1998. The story for this game goes, the Terran, who are the human colonists, Zerg, an alien race, all about evolution, a Protoss, an ancient race with high tech, a locked in three-way conflict, vying for power, control, and resources of the galaxy. The Terran ghost, Kerrigan, has been corrupted by the Zerg Overmind has be and has now become the Queen of Blades. Now it's a fight for survival in space. StarCraft 64 contains both the original campaign as well as Brood Wars from the expansion pack. When you start up the game, you get to choose your race, which is obviously, as I said before, the Terran, the Zerg, or the Protoss. And you can either play the campaign missions, or you could choose a custom level you wish to play. Or, neat feature in this game, you can also play in two-player versus. Now, real quick, when you start up the game and you first begin building your base, one neat feature is that your worker units are automatically assigned to harvest minerals. So, that's kind of a nice feature that's not in the PC port. Next, I'd like to touch on the controls for this game, which are critically important for a real-time strategy game. You can select units with the analog stick and assign tasks using the C buttons. If you select a group of units that are of different types, you can cycle through individual ones with the L or R buttons. I will note that due to the complexity of this game, there's a bit of a Steep learning curve. It takes a little bit to get used to the controls and how to assign units. But overall, I'll give Blizzard credit where credit is due for making use of all the buttons on the Nintendo 64 controller. The only downside of the controls is that there is a little bit of a delay when you're giving units orders, and it can make micromanaging individual units kind of tough to get used to. Now next, let's touch on the music and sound effects of this game both of which were pulled directly from the PC port. It feels pretty unique to hear this game's music or various units, such as like the Marines or the Siege Tanks, playing while you're playing this on the Nintendo 64. I will say that the StarCraft PC port or the Mac port have far superior audio quality overall, but the console, nice is, console version is kind of nice. One quick note, about this console port, most of the cutscenes had to be dramatically either cut down or removed. I'm guessing that this was likely to conserve some space on the cartridge just to make room for the overall size of the game. Now, to close out this review, a StarCraft 64 worth picking up and playing today? Well, if you enjoy real-time strategy games, Hey, why not? This is actually a very fun, faithful port. And while the PC version will always be far superior, my time with this game on the Nintendo 64, I've enjoyed it, and I'm happy to have this one in my collection. I will say, however, it's a little bit of an expensive game, so it's kind of a heavy hitter, going for roughly 50 bucks online. Thanks for watching. Until next time.